<laughs> anyway, spring sprung and shit's going on and fucking bees are going mad. We got crap going everywhere. I got some boxes on board and we're gonna go out and see if we can sort out a bit of a bit of a better plan than I had this morning, because that was a little bit dopey. So hopefully, while you're watching me, <laughs> it might look like I've got shit organized. We've just brought them out here on a little bit of um, canola just to boost them up a bit. And they've gone off their chops. So I've split them in half and we're gonna try and put them in some semblance of order. So as when we get up tomorrow morning, we can lay them all out nice and pretty. But as you can see, they're freaking getting a bit excited. So hopefully we haven't got too many that are gonna swarm on us. Well, technically we kind of created a swarm that's in the box already. No, it's called a split really, if you wanna get excited. So the other week, I've been here about a week ago, and I wonder if I bought one to show you. I probably didn't, hang on. <laughs> oh, come out. Oh. Bloody hell, I've stacked my ute well, haven't I? Oh. Get out of there, you bastard. Oh. <laughs> Think I need a bigger ute. Nah, maybe I just need to not put so much shit in it. Anyway. I, yeah. God. One thing about beekeeping is there's always honey on something. God. Anyway, I've got these divider boards. So you put that on top of your box. You put your super box up here with the new brood. And then hopefully they stay a little bit warm. And then they collect the field bees that come back in. And then they should make a new queen, which I reckon the other day I was here stuffing around, they got some queen cells. And now we're just going to tidy them up so when we get them to the farm, because they're going to go on some citrus after this. Then we can, when we lay them out, they'll all be ready to put some new supers back on the new boxes. That's the plan, in any case. <laughs> what is the saying? Could be good, could be shit. But at the moment, it's somewhere in between. Anyway, the young fella was asking me about why the bees are making a beard on the front of their box. And so I thought, oh, I don't know whether we've talked about this before, but it's pretty much because on a warm day, and it's been in spring, there's, they've got to regulate the temperature inside the box. So when all the ladies are in there buzzing and carrying on, it sort of warms up too much. So they've got to hang out the front. And hence why we're trying to split them so as that they don't decide to get swarm and bugger off and make another home that we haven't got hold of. So that's what they do in the wild. They get full, they get too excited, and then poof, next thing you know, you've got them in your bloody backyard and hanging in a tree. So this is your board in here that I was showing you a minute ago. Now, just for entertainment, these are 10 frame boards and these are eight frame boxes. Now, if you're ever thinking about being a beekeeper, read the first thing it says, beekeeping 101. Have one size box. Don't get fucking eights and tens and frames and blah. Anyway, this is why. It's when you come out here in the middle of the bloody nowhere and you've got a 10 frame box divider on an eight frame box, you have to improvise. <laughs> so I actually sat the box inside the frame and hung it over the edge so i've turned it around so what i've done is i've got so this is the box was the original entrance was here flying in and out but i put the queen entrance this side and turned it around and so the top's making a new queen but also keeping a bit of warmth that's the plan anyway but ultimately we're going to requeen this whole little section because these well, actually these ones aren't too bad, but there's about five boxes down the other end that uh, I think they should be on, what is that shit they give you with you've got crazy crap going on? Um, Valium, is that what calms you down? What's going on? Oh, uh, shut up. No, this is, a, well, this is a 10. No, it's not. Why the f*** didn't that fit? Maybe it is an 8. Oh, f*** hell. Oh, I've got the wrong bloody pile. Anyway, I've got some that are 10s and some that are 8s, and as I said earlier, don't do that to yourself. Just get one size that's all the same. Just 10s or 8s or 6s or fucking whatever it is, just get them all the same. Don't buy everybody else's problems, which is what I did. 
Note to self. <laughs> anyway, we might have driven out here for nothing. Oh, look. Oh, that was fails when you pick up some cow shit. How for the smokers this is. Oh, bloody hell. Some of them are tens. Oh, fuck. I don't know, what are we going to do with that mess? We should have brought an actual whole box. Which is what I thought about doing before you got distracting me. No, oh, that's alright, we can come back. Well, that's alright. We'll have to have dinner before we come back then. Oh, shit! <laughs> Epic fail. Bumbo! Oh, how many bloody eights have you got here, lad? God. That's not very helpful. I've screwed this up dramatically. Ah. Okay, oh well. Anyway, that means we're gonna have to go for another drive. Just as well, fuel's only in two dollars a litre, isn't it? No, <laughs> oh, two. Ah. What are we going to do? Because then, if we come back in the dark, it'll be a nightmare. Maybe we'll just do the ones we can do while we're here, and then we'll have. What have we got one, two, three, four, five. Seven, eight, nine. Nine that we can do. So, I guess, if you would do that statistically, now if you were a statistical person, and you could do nine, and it only couldn't do four, statistically, you would say that's a good average, wouldn't you? Unless you were on the share market, and your, only, and your nine shares were good, and your four shares went really shit, then it was a bad average. I don't know how the share market works, that's why I'm f***ing around being a beekeeper. <laughs> no, see now, if you were, <laughs> if we were watching any other bloody beekeeping show, he wouldn't show you all this messed up shit. Just remember when you read the first thing you ever read, as I said again, I reiterate, is it reiterate when you do something again? I reiterate, pick the same size box, it'll save you a whole lot of stress. Might not save you any money, but it'll save you getting shitty like this particular moment. <laughs> I've got two empty boxes here. So, that would mean we've got 9, 10, 11, and only two that are f***ed. <laughs> well, it's about to get very exciting in a minute. I think we're going to have bees going everywhere. So if you see a bit of blurry footage, you'll know the cameraman's been stung on his ankles because he's forgotten his socks. Okay, where do we start? Do we start at that? I reckon we'll start at that end because these guys, I think, were um, angrier. Well, was that was supposed to be? Shit, I don't remember now. I do remember getting quite a lot of stings. <laughs> Holy shit, look at that lot. These little ladies are cute little Italian bees. So they're doing all right. They're just a bit full up. Everybody get some excited and pretty quick. Kill that cockroach. <laughs> Hmm, looking, 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 come on you chicks, oh here we go, here's one down the bottom here, so that's the queen cell that we're looking for, there should be a couple more on these few more frames as we go forward, I was just having a thought to myself, which is typical, thinking to myself while we're filming this crap. I think I've, not only did I bring the wrong size bases for the eight frame boxes, I don't think I brought my scalpel, if we have a box that doesn't have a queen cell, we could get the scalpel and cut the queen cell out and, you know, join them together, but, oh well, who knows. Oh, I've got a pocket knife, maybe I could sharpen that on my window. Right. 
This one under here, that's still got the old queen, so we don't need to worry because it's made a nest up here. So you try to keep the old queen in the bottom box because she's going to be going and getting all excited, and the new queen's made in the top box. So, and then you've turned it around, so you've caught all the field bees, so that's why the top box is a bit more hectic than the bottom box. But she's making a whole lot of new babies, so it should all even out. Oh, that'd be right. Oh well, that solved that problem. Yet another piece of old crap that a bloke borrowed. Oh, I didn't borrow, I actually paid money for this junk. Oh, it's not the box that's the problem anyway, you idiot. It's the base is the problem. But that's fine because we can use that base without using the box. Can't we? Say yes, cameraman. Yes. <laughs> Nope, look at that, straight up. What the hell, I wonder how they got a queen way over there. Huh, cool. Oh well, that's all right, that's all we need to see. Yeah, I know you don't, don't do any of that banging stuff. <laughs> You've got a reasonable amount of bees in both boxes, a reasonable amount of split. These top box actually got more field bees, but the queen has made a few more bees in this box because she's laying eggs and hatching out easier, so. So that's the theory of it. So hopefully if our young virgin queen has a, a good little flight and finds a reasonable match at the nightclub, we will, um, well I don't know, would it be a nightclub out where the drones are hanging out? I wonder what that's called. It's probably called something rude, but I'm not going to say it because it's, um, well, I'm allowed to say rude shit on this show, apparently. It, it might be that, it, maybe it'd be called, it'd probably be called the f zone, wouldn't it? <laughs> but anyway, I don't know, I'm sure it's got a technical term, mating zone or something. Anyway, because of course, as you would know, when she hatches out, she'll wander around the hive and get herself orientated a bit. And then when she's got her strength up, she'll make a few little flights out. And she will find a spot where all the boys are hanging out, shake a little tail, and then whoopo! Next thing you know, you've got a box full of bees. For all you would-be beekeepers out there, if you're wondering why you'd have to pay $150 or $300 for a nucleus box that's properly bred, it's because when you catch a swarm like those three that we just played with, they are seriously upset. <laughs> They are bloody stupid. So if you're thinking of playing with bees, not only should you buy some nice relaxed little ladies from some reputable beekeeper like the Bunyip Bee People, or, no, there's no or, don't f***ing do it. Definitely go out and buy yourself a bee suit anyway if you're gonna catch a wild swarm, because look at them, they're just completely mad. We thought we'd get all motivated and come and pick the ladies up because it was bloody miserable and showery rain. And we're, so we traveled out here and it's like a bit earlier than we probably should have come here. And so anyway, the bloody sun's come back out and it's all nice and warm again. You gotta hate spring, don't you? But we'll see what's going on. We might have to leave one box out here to pick up the stragglers. Anyway, at least the, at least the cameraman will be happy because the light won't be so shit like it normally is. Look at that, I think they actually, look at this, I think they actually remember us from yesterday. I think we might go and get our suits on somewhere else. Oh shit, I'm spitting on the camera. It was bloody cold when we left home. 
Anyway, we've driven out of here in the middle of bloody nowhere and we've got here and the girls are all awake because the silly bloody sun <laughs> came back out. So we don't know what to do. See, back in the day, if you were smoking cigarettes, you could sit here and do that. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to sit here and discuss the whys and wherefores. Hey, we could listen to a podcast, couldn't we? We could listen to something on the, on the, on the podcast thing. That's me talking without cameras. <sighs> Maybe we should start a podcast. I wonder what that would be about. Random concepts of a rambling 50-year-old man <laughs> lost in his own mind. Whew. Could be a problem. Well, I think this move might be fun. The ladies are already trying to sting us before we even get near them. They're like sending out kamikaze attacks. So if we don't get stung to death, we'll see you in episode 98. <laughs> see if I can do like the other night, pulled it off and blah, blah, blah. Oh, just to let you know too, I'm so bloody well organized. I've lost one of my bolts already. So I'm down to a recycled long bolt. <laughs> Ah, no, no. I made the hole slightly bigger, so it's a bit more. It's a bit more bush bee man friendly now. <laughs> I was just thinking, since we've got a bit of cow shit laying around here, one of my mates suggested that we that some people put cow shit and horse shit and whatever else and pine well he recommended pine needles but some people use shit and I'm thinking these bees are such a shit we might put some shit in our smoker because that'll sort of suit them uh. I wonder if burning shit smells like shit <laughs> Smell like shit. <laughs> I think we've done the shit thing wrong. There's not much smoke. <laughs> I think we might we might go back to the old school. Morning, morning. We've got the little lady safe and sound to the next destination. You know the cool thing about beekeeping? If you've never got up at sunrise, or as the sun's rising, and listening to the birds, it's bloody cool fun. They're beautiful little creatures all saying, hello, hello, where the bloody hell is everybody? So all the, all the birds and the bees, as they would say, because the bees in the boxes are all going, what the f was that? <laughs> I can't know what the hell! And then when they get out of their box, they're going to go, I don't think these pine trees were here yesterday, were they? Because these are the splits we're making. But we want to try to make them in some semblance of order. <laughs> but I plan to while we're here is to change for all of the eights, out of the eights into the tens, so then we've got a uniformed, at least a uniform package of each. So at least all the eights would be together. That's the size boxes, if you're not up to speed with me terminology.
my mad plan was if we had them sort of on a bit of an angle facing into the sun, then they'd all get the morning sun on the front of their box. But that's easier said than done, stacking stuff crookedly straight. So I'm just going to rebox this one because it's got. It's actually reasonably solid, but the, it's got no legs, so stacking it's a pain in the ass. So I'm just going to put the girls in here, and then I'm just going to do those eight frame boxes into some other boxes because if you remember, we didn't have the right size out there in the scrub, so it's a retrofit here <laughs> back at home. Everybody's going to get really a rude awakening in a minute. They thought they'd had a blooming rough morning of it already. <laughs> Poor little darlings. They probably got a bit of an ant attack over there, there where they've been. And some nasty bullets that used to turn up after dark. So there's a little bit of honey on board, which is good. Put that over there. Very nice, a little bit of fresh comb, a bit of fresh brood there, which is good. You won't f around too long because we don't want them to get too cold. And there's the little lady. Here she is having a little bit of a run around. This should give them a bit nicer box to live in now. Because this box is a little bit naughty because it's got no clearance on the bottom. Remember to leave a little bit of room so the ladies can run in. I inherited this box and it's whoever put it together in my opinion, only in my opinion, so out there in bee land if you do this, I'm sorry, but normally you want a bit of bee space at the bottom of your box. So when you go to the shop, or online these days, but what they've got done here, is you've got your box and they've got a beautiful base, and then they've just put the actual box straight to the base. And then they've cut a hole, cut a hole in their box, so they can get an entrance, which doesn't give you any bee space at the bottom. So the better idea is when you buy your box, and you make your base, whatever base you want to make. You want to get a bit of 10 mil, 10 mil wood and run along between your base and your box. And then when you come around the front, you have a little bit along the front of either side. And then that gives you your opening and also gives you a B space on the bottom of your box. So the girls can run in under the frames and work up in, and that's a bit easier for them. And it gives uh, them a real chance to get a hold of the moths or whatever else bugs that are trying to annoy the shit out of them. So just keep that in mind. If you're at home and you're making up your B boxes, or if you're just starting out, <laughs> you know, just remember to leave a bit of bee space at the bottom of your box. It'll, the girls will love you for it. So this is a diff this is what I was trying to talk about. This has actually got a tin base, which is not necessarily popular with everybody, but yeah, and I don't think it's such a big problem, but uh, it's better with a wooden base if you've got something that's waterproof, I think it's better. But anyway, as again, I've inherited these tin bottom boxes and the girls are already in there, so I'm replacing them as I go. But this is what I wanted to tell show you. So this is your normal full depth box, full depth super box, or this is the brood box, but it's the full depth box. And then they've run this little bit of wood. This is your little bit of 10 mil at the bottom of the box, between that and the base. And then that creates your door. Now, if you want to get real excited, you can actually design it so that you can make this wider or narrower, which is kind of a very good idea. So you can actually take some of that out. So you know, you have a little screw in there and you can pull out an extra section or put it back in for winter. But yeah, so if you're making boxes, just remember to get a little bit of bead. Just save the ladies a lot of heartache. Oh, I reckon the queen's hatched out in here. Oh, really? I reckon, I reckon because um, well, she's about to come out. I don't know, she's, is she still moving there? Here she comes. Yeah. Yep. She's a little virgin. There you go. The birth of a virgin. Queen, that is. <laughs> so that's before she gets mated. She's just she's got her all her organs going. But until she goes on a mating flight, she um, won't fill up her ovaries, which is when she's got a really big long tail is because she's got all her eggs and um, the semen from her mating flight. And that's, so hopefully, hopefully she has a successful flight, finds a good couple of fellas, comes back and makes a lovely nest.
Anyway, I reckon that was pretty cool. We got the ladies here reasonably safe. I don't think any of us got a bee sting this morning, so that's pretty bloody epic. Put me boards back in my container where I can store them up. And um, yeah, hey, how cool was that? We actually caught a queen coming out of her. Like, we timed that perfectly. I tell you what, the things we do to organize so you Bush Bee Man viewers can see shit happen, you never know. And what's more, all you Patreon supporters out there, you make it happen too. So keep up the good work.